I remember one time I probably wasn't even saved three days and I had decided that, you know, I needed some money and, you know, I'm going to go trick with this guy because I know he going to give me some money at the end of the night. You know, I believe God and all, and I believe what the pastor is saying, but I also know what I can do on my own. And if I call this guy over here and I know he got some money at the end of the day, when he get up and go home, I'm going to have me some money to be able to pay my bills. I ain't got to fast and pray about that. He's the answer. So I called the guy over, you know, and I'm saying, y'all know how I go. You know, I ain't trying to promote nothing, but I'm just telling you where I was. I called the guy over. I had to be probably 28 at the time. I called the guy over, you know what I'm saying? We did what we did, most definitely sitting all night long. So the next morning, I'm like, okay, bye. You got to leave before my kids wake up because I didn't want my kids to see that he was over there. So he left, walked out the door and everything, but that joker went to McDonald's and came back with food for everybody talking about, um, I'm going to take them to school and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do what I can because I want to be your man. So my plan went wrong. That wasn't what I planned to do. You know, we're going to trick, do what we're going to do. You're going to leave me a couple of dollars and you're going to go ahead on and act like you don't know me. You understand what I'm saying? It didn't go like that. He told me he had been infatuated with me and he had been wanting to see me and all. And he just felt like this was a door open, you know, and he was walking through it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I opened the door. And it didn't go like I wanted it to go. And when I told him like, nah, that ain't the plan. That, that ain't what's up. That ain't what's going on. He broke every piece of glass in my house, every piece of glass in my house. He beat me so bad at the time I had Tazillions and all this part of my hair had came out. And then he had this kicker box that he would take out of his car every night. You know, the little speakers back in the day, they would have those kickers and everything. And he was taking my head and he was slamming my head up against this kicker box like, you ain't going to be pretty. In his mind, it was like his mental was telling him to make me deform. You get what I'm saying? Really mess me up. And all I kept doing was blaming myself because I opened the door. I opened the door. I hope y'all listening because I know some of y'all done opened the door and you wonder now how you going to close this door. Let me help you out. I knew I couldn't talk to nobody about it because when you just be, sometimes you can be too transparent and too honest and people will judge you. They ain't looking at it like, wow, she messed up, you know. She didn't deserve that. You know, no, they look at it like, hey, you had no business and you shouldn't have. And you know better and you should have, would have, could have. I ain't want to hear all that. So I let them stay there. Got the windows fixed and, you know, pretended like everything was okay. You understand what I'm saying? I remember when I went to church and the woman of God told me, she said, he ain't fooling God. He may have a lot of people fool because I said, I'm going to church. You know how they'd be like, you want to get rid of somebody, start going to church. So I start going to church and that joker started coming to church too. And I was just so miserable. But I had on my little fake smile and everything. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want my kids to really see how much I had messed up. You get what I'm saying? I didn't want them to know, wow, mama done went this low. You know, she trying to trick with this guy. For some money, you know, it ain't that serious. You know what I'm saying? I, I really was in condemnation at that time. You get what I'm saying? Just saying, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. That didn't seem like it did it. It was like everything I did just kept replaying in my mind. Like, how could you? And, uh, and it was it worth it? Nah, you know, you start hearing all that stuff. And I remember when the prophetess told me, she said, he can't fool God. She said, keep praying, Kim. Keep praying. Now. Prior to me getting saved, or really prior to that moment, I ain't really know you can talk to God about stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I done read, at this time, I had read a couple of scriptures, but it didn't have nothing to do. You know, when they say God so loved the world that he forgave his only, he gave his only begotten son, you know, that didn't say nothing about you out here tricking. You get what I'm saying? You know, um, what else? It, it was a couple of scriptures I knew. But I didn't really know God like that to be talking to him about, you know, I done messed up. You know what I'm saying? I done really messed up. And I don't like this guy. And and I never liked him. You know, and I don't want him here. But 
What am I going to do? Because last time I told him to leave, he acted a fool. He broke all my glass out. He broke my windows, broke my table. He really messed everything up. So I don't know how to get him out. Well, anyway, I was just that crazy to try it. I believe the woman of God. I was just that crazy to try it. And I went home. Really, it was like I was in my car. Whenever I got in my car by myself, I would just be like, Lord, I'm sorry. Like, I, if you hear me, you know how we be. If if you hear me, if if it's okay, you know, please get him out of my house. I don't want him there. I don't like him. I was wrong. The money ain't even worth it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just forgive me. You know, Lord, forgive me. You know, I ain't know no scripture, so I ain't going to say I said all that. I just was saying what was in my heart, saying how I felt like, you know, it's kind of like if I had a best friend at the time that I can just open up to and really just spill it all out, that's how I was talking to God in prayer. Like, Lord, you know, I know this and you know this and you saw it and you know everything, you know, because we can't, we can't be fake with him. Now, I wasn't being fake. You know, I was just talking in, in my car. I'll say probably four days after I started praying about four days. And I was like, every time I was in my car, I was really praying. Um, I was depressed, but it was a secret. I didn't, you know, I didn't speak that. I didn't talk about it, but it was like, I was happy until I got home. And then he was in there and it was like, I had to fake it. You get what I'm saying? Cause I didn't like him. I did not like him. And that's a real place. Honestly, I slept with somebody I didn't even like. I was just straight looking out for the money, trying to get ahead. You get up and leave and go ahead. I'm do this, do that, take care of the kids, get their school clothes, and that's it. But it didn't go that way. But I'm glad it didn't go that way because that situation taught me to pray. That situation let me know that God does hear us when we cry out to him. I didn't go to my pastor about that. I didn't tell nobody in the church to pray for my relationship. That was just between me and God. That was just between me and God. 